Welcome to Living 315. Today we dive into 10 scientific facts found within the Bible that were known thousands of years before secular scholars and humanity discovered them. Let's get into it. Number 1. Earth's Free Float in Space Job 26.7, written 3,500 years ago. He stretches out the north over empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. The Bible proclaims that the earth floats freely in space, a concept that contrasts with ancient beliefs of the earth resting on a vast animal. Today, it is understood that the earth indeed orbits through space unattached. Number 2. The earth is round. Isaiah 40.22, written 2,800 years ago. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. The Bible informs us that the earth is indeed round. Contrary to the once widespread belief in a flat earth, it was the scriptures that motivated Christopher Columbus to embark on his circumnavigation. He noted, it was the Lord who put it into my mind. There is no doubt that the inspiration came from the Holy Spirit, as he comforted me with rays of marvelous light from the Holy Scriptures, as mentioned in his diary, regarding his discovery of the New World. Number 3. The First Law of Thermodynamics Genesis 2.1, After Creation Thus the heavens and the earth, and all the host of them, were finished. The Hebrew term used in scripture signifies the past definite tense of finished, meaning an action that was completed in the past and will not happen again. The act of creation was finished, a one-time event. This concept aligns precisely with the first law of thermodynamics. This law, also known as the law of conservation of energy and or mass, asserts that neither matter nor energy can be created or destroyed. According to this principle, there is no creation happening in the present day. It is finished, just as the Bible declares. Number 4. Second Law of Thermodynamics Psalm 102, 25 and 26 Of old you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Even they will perish, but you endure, and all of them will wear out like a garment. The Bible mentions three times that the earth is deteriorating like a garment, mirroring the second law of thermodynamics, or the law of increasing entropy. This law posits that in all physical processes, any ordered system naturally progresses towards greater disorder over time. Consequently, everything is gradually degrading and wearing down as energy becomes increasingly scarce for use. This suggests that the universe will ultimately wear out, a concept that science only came to recognize relatively recently. Number 5. The Hydrologic Cycle Amos 9.6, written 2,800 years ago. He calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. The Mississippi River channels over 6 million gallons of water per second into the Gulf of Mexico. Considering the multitude of rivers globally, where does all this water go? The answer is found in the hydrologic cycle, a concept not fully understood until the 17th century, yet eloquently described in the Bible. The scriptures reveal all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full, to the place from which the rivers come, that they return again, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7. Additionally, Psalm 135 verse 7 explains, He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, he makes lightning for the rain, while Ecclesiastes 11 verse 3 notes that if the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth, highlighting the cyclical and replenishing nature of water on earth as recognized in biblical texts. Number 6. The Science of Oceanography Psalm 8.8 8, And the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas, the sea, a vast expanse of water, seems an unlikely place to find paths. Yet, the concept of ocean currents was only recognized by humanity in the 1850s, despite the Bible referencing the science of oceanography nearly 2,800 years earlier. 
Matthew Morey, 1806-1873, often hailed as the father of oceanography, was inspired by the phrase paths of the sea found in Psalm 8. Taking the biblical description to heart, Morey set out to discover these paths. His groundbreaking work in oceanography, documented in a seminal book that remains in publication today, underscores the early biblical insight into the structured flows within the world's oceans. Number 7. The Origin of Life Genesis 2-7 And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. While 21st century scientists acknowledge their understanding of life's origins is filled with lots of theories, little science, the Bible provides a clear account of how life began, according to the testimony of the only being present at creation. Sir Fred Hoyle, a Cambridge professor of astronomy, highlighted the improbability of life spontaneously arising from non-living matter, stating, the likelihood of the spontaneous formation of life from inanimate matter is one to a number with 40,000 knots after it. It is big enough to bury Darwin and the whole theory of evolution. There was no primeval soup, neither on this planet nor on any other, and if the beginnings of life were not random, they must therefore have been the product of purposeful intelligence. This perspective aligns with the biblical view that life's inception was not a product of chance but of deliberate design. Number 8. The Origin of Sexes Matthew 19.4 He who made them at the beginning made them male and female. The presence of both male and female sexes across nearly all complex life forms, ranging from horses, dogs, and humans to fish, moths, monkeys, elephants, and birds, raises intriguing questions about the origins of sexual reproduction. In these species, males and females are interdependent for reproduction, with neither being able to perpetuate life independently. This mutual necessity poses a challenge to evolutionary theory, particularly regarding which sex appeared first. If a male of any given species emerged before a female, it's perplexing to consider how it could reproduce in the absence of a female counterpart. The simultaneous spontaneous emergence of both sexes, each equipped with intricate and complementary reproductive systems, further complicates the scenario. Moreover, if it were possible for each sex to reproduce independently, the evolutionary development of a reproductive strategy necessitating both sexes for survival becomes a profound mystery. This conundrum invites deeper exploration into the mechanisms and evolutionary pressures that could have led to the establishment of sexual reproduction as a dominant mode of perpetuation among complex life forms. Number 9. Countless Stars Jeremiah 33.22, written 2,500 years ago. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, nor the sand of the sea measured, the Bible claims that the heavens host an innumerable array of stars. At the time this was written, the true expanse of the starry sky was unknown, with only about 1,100 stars visible to the naked eye, a number that aligns with those cataloged by Ptolemy in the Almagest. Today, with the aid of modern astronomy, we understand that the universe contains an astonishingly vast number of stars, estimated to be around 10 to the power of 25 in the observable universe truly rendering them beyond the capacity of humans to count. Number 10. Blood is the source of life. Leviticus 17.11, written 3,500 years ago. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. The scriptures state that life is in the blood, a concept not fully appreciated until about 200 years ago when the practice of bloodletting often led to the death of the ill. Today, it is understood that blood indeed sustains life, serving crucial functions such as transporting water and nutrients to every cell, removing waste materials, regulating body temperature, and distributing oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. The loss of blood equates to the loss of life, underscoring the biblical assertion of blood's vital role in sustaining health and life. So what did you think of the video? We'd love to hear your perspective, so please leave a comment below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. 
Until next time, always be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you.